Welcome to ABC 24 This Week. I'm Richard Ransom. Glad you're with us this Sunday as we bring you the real story behind the big stories. If you cannot catch us here in the morning at 9 a.m., we give you another chance Sundays at 11 p.m. That's how much we aim to please around here. Our topics for today, the catch-22 of policing. From the DOJ to City Council, the Tyree Nichols case has led to a serious push for police reforms, while at the same time, polls show the public is so fed up with crime, they want more law and order measures. The controversy surrounding the residency requirement for Memphis's mayoral candidates just got a lot more interesting this week. The Shelby County Election Commission gets a legal opinion saying if a candidate did not live in Memphis for the five years prior to the election, they cannot run. We'll talk about how this issue could put some campaigns in jeopardy. And capital craziness, we can't make this stuff up, so we won't. But the stuff our lawmakers are up to in Nashville is giving the rest of the nation a lot to laugh about at our expense. And we'll get to all of that coming up in the show today. We only have 30 minutes, and hopefully we'll get as much in as possible. Uh, joining me in my panel is uh, ABC 24 political analyst Otis Sanford on my far right. Susan Adler Thorpe is a political consultant with Thorpe Communications. And the Reverend Kenneth Whalen with New Olive Worship Center here as well. Thanks to all three of you for being here. Let's talk about the policing first. A lot happened this week with the DOJ saying, uh, we're going to launch two different probes into how Memphis police are operating. One, this, the specialized units that we've been hearing so much about, and then just overall. And this announcement was made by the DOJ and the Attorney General, I think a video of it, uh, in Washington, when they simultaneously announced how they were taking an even bigger step uh, to right wrongs in the Louisville Police Department. But nonetheless, uh, Memphis was mentioned in there too because of the Tyree Nichols case. And also this week you had the City Council, Memphis City Council passing several resolutions aimed at um, uh, police reform measures. Uh, one of the biggest ones that got the most attention uh, was the issue of whether a squad car should be marked when they pull people over for traffic stops for obvious reasons. So, uh, Otis, which of, of those interests you the most and what impact do you think they can have? Well, I think all of it in interested me. Uh, first of all, the DOJ coming in and, and announcing that they're going to take a, a review, uh, I think is a good thing. And I think all Memphians should welcome that. Um, we need to have a review, especially of these specialized units. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, the, the, the work that the city council did uh, with the reforms, um, I admire uh, their efforts to do this. I do understand some of the pushback uh, because, as you just said, there are some people in town because of the crime problem and especially because of all of the recklessness driving, uh, especially on our interstates and roadways, they want to see more police out there uh, making traffic stops. Uh, and if they're using unmarked cars, so be it, as long as they understand that they can't engage in some unlawful or inappropriate activity. So that one is going to have to be sorted out. Jim Strickland is not in favor of getting rid of the unmarked cars, and he's not in favor of a couple of other things, including the data collection. Um, but this, so this will have to be worked out. I do admire the council for at least trying to bring some reform to the police department. Five out of six of the measures uh, were passed, so they did yeah. take some significant steps for sure. Uh, Susan, uh, there was a lot of passion at the city council meeting when they addressed these different uh, reform measures. Uh, folks got up and they were really uh, lit up <laughs> with uh, <laughs> anger about the, ne the necessity, I guess, for, for action to be taken. Obviously, city council was listening, but on conservative radio, it's really taking some hits, uh, the way people acted, and that um, it, basically they said it was out of control. When you, I've covered city council for years and years. People get angry at city council meetings if the issue is important enough to them. Uh, oh, absolutely, and it's 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 a very emotional issue for a lot of people. So, uh, emotional emotions do go go wild in some cases at council meetings. But I, you know, I think that there's there's got to be a balance there between people who are demanding. Um, some, in some ways, very important reforms. Some ways, reforms that just probably won't happen. And when the conservative side of the, of the ledger says that they want, they want more law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I think, I think everybody, both sides, would like to see more law enforcement, more officers on the streets. Um, so would Mayor Strickland, if we could afford them, if we could find them. I think people are, are angry about so much crime on the street. They do want more and stronger policing, but they don't want brutal policing. They want, they want policing out there that helps protect the citizens, helps to protect them. And on the other hand, I think that the people who were screaming at the city council, they're tired of, 
of the brutality uh, that's, that some of these officers exact on members, particularly in the African American community. So um, f offering resolutions to that um, is, a, is a good thing. Now we need to figure out how, how do we enact some of the better ones. That's what a representative democracy is supposed to do, right, Reverend Whalen? Well, absolutely. I'm, it's unfortunate that the issue of law and order, though, I think is going to cloud the mayor's race, as I think it, it typically clouds most politics when it's time to elect a leader, a president, a governor, a mayor. The emotions involved in the crime issue tend to overshadow and take a false leadership over other, I think, more important issues. I just think it's unfortunate uh, with regard to people who come to meetings. When I was on the school board, I used to just, you know, drink a lot of water and be ready to <laughs> sit for a long time when people come with emotional mm -hmm. reactions to the condition of the schools. It's just, I, I'm mindful of, Dr. King had a saying that said, uh, people were so concerned about people rioting in the streets. And Dr. King said that riots are the language of the unheard. Yeah. And I think of that whenever you have mm. groups of people who get violent or, or loud and angry at public meetings. It's just their way of reacting to not being heard, or they think they're not being heard. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, uh, we talked about it not being just a Memphis problem uh, when it comes to frustration with crime out there. You had the uh, mayor of Chicago just recently, uh, Ms. Lightfoot, who was voted out over crime issues. And there was a mention of this recently uh, in Axios.com. They talked about increasingly frustrated residents of major cities are pushing the issue to the forefront because they're tired of decades of promises and promises. Here in Memphis, we've been promising and promising we're going to hire more cops. We just can't seem to make any headway there. I don't think it's anybody's fault. But nonetheless, the frustration is building about, you know, as car break-ins go up and car thefts skyrocket and all the things people are having to deal with in their daily lives, if they haven't experienced it themselves, they know somebody who has. And one of the things they cited was a poll out of Denver where there's a mayor's race uh, going on right now. They said a recent poll in the mayoral race in Denver, a national democratic hub, found more than 70% embrace forcing people to get help if they're living on the streets with serious addictions as they talked about the intermingling, intermingling between crime and homelessness and mm -hmm. some communities are dealing with that more than others but it is interesting the the conclusion of this uh, pollster was loving these people and this is a democratic pollster loving these people hugging these people is not enough perhaps some tough love is in order so you have this Schism, I guess, is what I would say is what's going on there, Otis. Well, you do have schisms, and, and you do have people who say something has to be done. Uh, you mentioned the juvenile problem. I mean, we do have a very serious problem in this community uh, with juveniles breaking into cars, stealing cars, wrecking cars, uh, taking stuff out of cars, including guns. Uh, so you do have that, and people do want something to be done. And I'm not surprised that it's uh, uh, taking front and center in, in a lot of mayoral races. It calls uh, Mayor Lightfoot her job. It's an issue uh, in, uh, in New York uh, with the incumbent mayor. Here in Memphis, we don't have an incumbent on the ballot. So there's nobody to put the blame for this. Um, so the candidates who will emerge as the candidates, they're going to have to just show what they're going to do and be convincing uh, to the electorate about how they're going to handle crime. Uh, and we'll see who, who's able to make that message stronger. We're getting short on time, but Susan, you have uh, some perspective from the juvenile uh, court issue and the challenges they have once the federal government stepped in and we had that decree and things were, were forced to change there. Some people look at that and see that might be one of the factors. Well, the DOJ came, came to juvenile court years ago, um, um, requested, I think, by Commissioner Henry Brooks at the time to because they felt that there was a lot of um, um, unfairness the way the court treated particularly children of color and the court came in found a lot of problems there was a memorandum of agreement signed between the court the county government and the DOJ one of, one of the things within that memorandum of agreement was really they they tied the hands of juvenile court essentially when it came to juveniles committing crime. They wanted to cut down the number of kids that were forced through the system. They wanted to keep children away from the court, out of the system. And what happens with that is that fewer and fewer kids are coming to the court that commit these crimes. And if they, if the police, uh, let me wrap it up quickly, if the police think that a child 
has committed a crime, then it's up to the officer whether that child is going to be brought to the court or not. Most of the officers just issue a summons. The kid goes back to the environment that they came from, continues to commit crimes on the street, and until eventually it gets so egregious that they wind up in juvenile court. It's, it's not that simple, but that's basically what's happened. More, there are fewer kids in detention in juvenile court, which is a good thing. The bad thing is they're back on the streets and they're um, without any supervision and they're committing the same crimes that they did before. I got about 30 seconds, but I remember your days as a school board member. You said absolutely spank kids at school. So uh, knowing that perspective, you have that perspective, <laughs> do we need to be more tough love uh, out there? More tough love and more accepting of our own responsibility and accountability in the way things are, especially Mayor Jim Strickland, who's responsible in large part for our police force reducing to below what we need. Okay, we'll leave that there. When we come back, we'll talk about the mayor's race and developments there. We'll talk about the issue of crime, but also residency might be an issue too. We'll be right back.